Hey, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to give a review here of a software I just started reusing again called Lightcam Pro. And it's a screen recording software that I've always liked, I used in the past, but hadn't updated in a while. So I wanted to just talk about the features here of Lightcam Pro and just talk about some of the workarounds that I did in order to troubleshoot some of the problems I had. Um, just with navigating the software and, and using it to record videos and put it into a video editor. Um, first and foremost, I think the feature set here, as you can see, is great. You can select an area to record and you can select your frames per second. Um, you have video recording options, video file options, picture in picture, audio device and editing abilities, um, titles, credits, logos, though I don't use those as much, but useful there. Um, you can convert video files, uh, you can extract the audio file, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of functionality to Lightcam, and it's, it's just very user-friendly, uh, really easy to navigate, and works well uh, with the screens that you have, whether you're using a desktop or a laptop. So taking a look here, you can kind of see that they have different presets on their framing. Um, they have the typical things you'd imagine for internet video with YouTube. Uh, I use the nice 20 by 1080 which a lot of people do for just standard high def, but even with 4K and other types of higher definition out there, you can do custom resolution so you can get better video uh, quality. And here you can kind of see, I, I'm using the 1920 by 1080 to match my webcam settings, the Logitech C920. And here you can see that you have options for your frames per second. I set it to 30 um, to also again match my webcam. Some people might want uh, higher frames per second if they're doing gaming, but for me this just works fantastic. 30 frames per second is plenty. Uh, as far as the picture in picture goes, as you can see the resolution is really clear, uh, very beautiful. You can choose all different kinds of formats for it. You can go widescreen, you can go more boxy, but you know that you can pretty much do whatever you'd you'd like to uh, do with the drop down menu uh, choose your webcam and choose where it starts but even if you choose where it starts you can actually move it anywhere you want along the screen which is fantastic because a lot of uh, screen recording software uh, software out there doesn't have that where you can just move the the, uh, the video window the picture in picture window for your webcam so I love that feature uh, as far as the video file options go, you have AVI, you have MP4, there's video codecs you know, that could be supported. You can also install your own and add some more. Um, there's audio codecs too that you can play with, but I'm using the standard um, codecs here that come you know, kind of recommended for my computer, uh, AVI here. And with the audio, I'm using a stereo 16-bit 44 kilohertz. Again, you can go up to 48 kilohertz, but this is pretty high quality. Um, as you can hear, uh, goes along pretty well uh, with the video. I'm not actually using my uh, webcam microphone that's built in. I'm using a blue mic, uh, but you know, it's seamless. It's beautiful. It, you know, I've had no issues with the syncing. Uh, on the audio device, you can put in the microphone. You can also bring in audio from the computer. Now, I will say this is one issue that I haven't fully uh, finished troubleshooting, but when I was doing audio being recorded from the computer and the mic, um, I was getting some pops and some, you know, almost like clicks, but like kind of pops and a little bit laggy. And I was afraid, like, oh, I'm not going to be able to use this. But I just turned it off and just put straight up microphone on because that's really all I need anyway. I'm not really recording any um, sounds or system devices. So it worked for me. I mean, I've read online that sometimes it's just a codec issue. Sometimes it's a system resources issue where you're running too many things. You might be able to make it work for you if you have a problem, but for me it didn't, but I didn't need it. This works great. I just turned off recording the system sounds. I just do the mic. Um, the really important thing here for me that mattered was being able to convert uh, my video file from the software itself. So you can actually change uh, the video file here to a WMV, which was really important for me because I wasn't able to do the AVI or MP4 in my uh, video editing software. I was using uh, Sony Movie Studio 12 and I could not pull it in. It, no matter what I tried to work around, the codecs were just not working. But I converted to WMV, high quality here, and as you can see, it, it just looks great. Um, no problems whatsoever being able to convert within Lightcam. So that's a beautiful thing. I'm really glad they have that because that, that was almost a deal breaker for me. I was kind of upset, but when I was able to convert to WMV, 
no problems whatsoever. And a lot of people are used to doing that anyway just to get something that is compatible with um, their recording software, unless you have something that's more high end like Premiere or uh, something you know with uh, another type of higher end uh, editing software, like I used to have. Um, picture in picture, uh, again here just showing uh, at the bottom um, there's a trimmer, so this is actually a video of my video, that's why I was like, ooh, there's this picture picture thing again. But at the bottom it's showing the trimmer, so you can actually trim your video, which is great. Again, being able to do some editing on the master file before um, you convert is wonderful. So you can use the trimmer to trim your video, cut maybe some of the ends, especially if you had uh, a lead-in where you're practicing, you just want to cut to the part where you start, works great. Um, saves you a little bit of uh, headache there because it's doing it with the native file within the the system, um, and then you know after that you can convert you know still in Lightcam and have a beautiful file to work with in your video editing software. So now I'm just going to pull back this image so I can look at some web browsing and you can kind of see here again works great. You're uh, recording. You're able to talk. Uh, over what it is that you're looking at on the internet. There is a uh, screen grab option, there is a draw tool option, uh, but I don't really use those things with the light cam. I like to use a different draw tool over it, something that's a little bit more smoother with some more options. So it's one of those things, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna demonstrate it, but you can use it. I personally uh, prefer to use a, a different type of drawing tool. But again, everything looks great, works great, um, and I highly recommend it. This is still one of my favorite screen recording uh, softwares and at a price that is incredible you know 20 to 30 bucks depending on which edition you get I mean it's really hard to beat now I'm not using the Android features for the pro version but I just wanted it just in case if I wanted to customize anything um, for Android but that's an option there too so hopefully this helps you uh, decide what type of screen recording software you'd like to get and if you have any questions just ask below and I'll do my best to answer them all right, take care.